Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Byron King with Investor Intel. And I have Dan Blondell here today uh, from a company called Nano One, which is located in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, Dan has a fascinating background in uh, engineering and material science. And Nano One, uh, if you are not familiar with the company, uh, is in the battery business, and in particular, uh, the, the lithium side or the cathode side of batteries. Uh, Dan, thank you for being with us uh, today. Uh, tell the viewers and listeners out there, just give us a quick summary of what is Nano One? What do you guys do? So uh, Nano One is a, um, we're an industrial technology company and we're developing a chemical process for the production of cathode materials. A cathode material is it's one side of the battery. It's one side of the electrode and mm -hmm. it is the most complex and expensive component within the cell. It could be 40 to 50% of the cost of a lithium ion battery cell. And that's because it's made of things like lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt, iron, phosphorus. There are a bunch of different flavors of lithium ion batteries. They all have lithium in them, but they use different metals and those uh, make, uh, make the battery do different things. Uh, some of them are better at charging. They charge faster. Some of them are safer. Some of them are cheaper. Uh, some of them have better energy density and they serve kind of different purposes in the market. Our technology is a platform that allows us to make all of them. And what we've developed is a chemical process to assemble the, you know, the, the key raw materials into a composite powder, which is the cathode material. That would then go off to a, a battery cell manufacturer who would mix it into a paste and spread it onto a piece of foil and roll it into a cell or fold it into a flat cell uh, that would go into, uh, obviously, into, into a battery application of some kind. Our technology allows us to use an alternative, alternative sources of raw materials like the lithium and the nickel and the manganese, but we can use materials that have a much smaller footprint, in, uh, environmental footprint, so it reduces, uh, reduces the byproducts and the, uh, the amount of waste. It reduces complexity, and as a result, it reduces costs, improves yield, um, all of that for the uh, ultimately for the improvement of the cathode material. But the process also simplifies the. Uh, we also the technology also simplifies the process. So there, there's a chemical component, there's a thermal component where you cook it in a furnace, and we're trying to drive down the cost and the capital, uh, both the capital and the operating costs of those parts of the process as well. All all for the purpose of a of having a lower cost material. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Yeah, one of the things that I noticed about what about your process is that you have eliminated the element sulfur from the process, and traditionally that's been in there. And you know, sulfur is a problem; it's a problematic chemical when you start to, you know, use it. And so, you, you've have you pre you've taken all the sulfur out? Is that fair? Yes. So um, uh, it's sulfur. Actually, you don't want sulfur in a battery, but right. what it is, the, it, it's an intermediate chemical that the industry uses right now. So they, it, it's easy to make, uh, what happens is they convert nickel into nickel sulfate mm -hmm. and they convert uh, cobalt into cobalt sulfate. Mm -hmm. And then that goes off to a cathode producer, then does a chemical, some bunch of chemical work to it. And all the sulfate comes out with sodium actually as a sodium sulfate waste stream. And it's two to three times larger than the cathode stream. In fact, it's more like a sodium sulfate um, manufacturing uh, plant with cathode as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. And and all of that's been fine while we we're in the thousands and tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands of tons. But as we hit the terawatt hour world and the and the uh, the EV evolution uh, revolution, we're going to be in the millions and tens of millions of tons. And that that sodium sulfate waste stream becomes untenable. So we are we we designed our process to completely eliminate it. We can go direct from nickel metals and sidestep that. We can go direct uh, from lithium carbonate to lithium uh, hydroxide. We can go direct from uh, the manganese and cobalt metals and the same thing on the LFP side with other metals. So all of this is, all of this is aimed at driving down uh, the footprint, which of course has a cost, but it also has a big CO2 component as well. Sure, sure. Well, and then, you know, just in terms of just handling, I mean, if you, have, if you, have, if you produce a ton of good product and you've got two tons of something to get rid of, you've got a problem over there. Uh, uh, so a couple of so you you use you use lithium nickel cobalt a lot of it. People are focused on lithium in many respects. I mean, there's lithium from brines, lithium from spodumene mining, things like that. Does it matter where your lithium comes from uh, in terms of what you can do with it? Ultimately, not. No, it's probably just you know cost and purity, and so you know you know what what uh, what are the impurities that come with it are probably the only things. But that's no different from than anyone else in the space. Actually, um, we we tend to we tend to prefer lithium carbonate um, for a couple reasons. So lithium hydroxide is uh, is not very stable. Um, um, it's very moisture sensitive. 
uh, it doesn't have a long shelf life um, and it's and it's quite corrosive. Lithium carbonate is everything but those things. And uh, so just much easier to handle. And typically carbonate is the first product that comes out of a brine type of operation. And traditionally will be somewhere between a thousand, let's call it a thousand to fifteen hundred uh, dollars a ton cheaper than than hydroxide. Now that doesn't, of course, in, in a lumpy market like we're in right now, that doesn't always happen. Um, but in the long run, we believe that carbonate will still play out as the really the lower cost component. So uh, there are some significant advantages to staying with it. But uh, but we're also quite flexible. We can go with the hydroxide as well. So uh, now, where do you stand? Where does the company stand right now in terms of what are what, you know what are you doing in terms of uh, you know lab work, bench work, pilot work, uh, anticipating a productive uh, uh, you know facility that will actually have the loading dock on it and you can you know put it on the truck. Well, we have projects at virtually every level of uh, of, uh, of development you can imagine. Um, uh, some of it is is really it's uh, there's there's sketches on paper, and some of it is all the way at what we would call a sort of a, a, a pre commercial demonstration um, uh, point of view. So we're we're at the point where we can build a. Um, um, a pilot, a production pilot plant that would allow us to then, you know, sample out significant volumes of material to a uh, to a large sort of automotive scale, and and so. Some of the chemistries are at different levels. LFP, lithium iron phosphate, is probably the most developed of our of our uh, of our technologies, and we believe is closer to sort of commercial readiness than, let's say, the nickel rich materials. Um, uh, we're we're really pushing um, the innovative envelope on the nickel rich materials by uh, by by going after the sulfate. Uh, the answer to the the elimination of sulfates and that's that's uh that's put us put it that puts us back a little bit in terms of the development but it gives us a great advantage so uh, we feel it's kind of worth that and then there are there's work we're doing on the on thermal processing and um uh and and sort of chemical reactors and things like that that are that are very early stage development we're not relying on them, but um, if they prove to be good, they will come in and replace the thermal processing that we have uh, designed right now. So they, as we de-risk those, we spiral them in as uh, as modules that will further reduce the cost of the the, the entire process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Nano One trades on U.S. and Canadian exchanges, and you have a website, and it's a very good website, and you have Thank presentation you. and links to videos and such, which are which are very educational. But let's give the viewers a real brief rundown. You know, what, what's the structure of the company in terms of share structure and how much money in the bank and a burn rate, things like that? There's, there's uh, roughly 100 million uh, shares out right now, and uh, we're sitting on somewhere just somewhere south of 50 million dollars um, uh, in in uh, in the bank, uh, somewhere between 40 and 50. So 50 um, cents a share is just money in the bank, so to speak. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 in terms of runway, um, uh, we're we're ramping things up. We have been spending, you know, in the last uh, year probably somewhere in, the, in a sort of 10 million dollar burn rate. We've got a bunch of capital expenses and we're hiring new people right now we expect this year to be uh, a little bit uh, pricier we're sure. we're looking at uh, a whole range of different opportunities right now to accelerate our business mm -hmm. um so it, it's a multi-year runway but we uh, we do anticipate uh, we're not going to drag it out for five years we're going to be you know pushing it uh, as fast as we can and taking uh, advantage of some of the the commercial opportunities out there that'll be really to, to drive the acceleration of our business uh Dan, this has been a pleasure. I, I, you know, I really appreciate that you would share your time with us this afternoon. And uh, uh, again, you know, Nano One trades U.S. Canada, a uh, great website full of information. Um, and uh, there's a there's people to contact there, your your IR side and everything. If people have questions, uh, and uh, you're you're going to be a North American focused. Uh, 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 production company eventually, uh, not importing everything from all over the world. Um, so uh, again, we thank you and we'll, I guess we'll call it quits at this point. Great, um, uh, fantastic to meet you. And I, I appreciate you taking the time as well and uh, to, uh, to learn more about us and, and great to have your audience listening too. Thank you.